Oh, hi. You're very early. Well, yes, I'm early too, but I am the one lecturing. Oh, it was the only bus the whole morning, really? Oh, yeah, that road is ridiculous. <laughs> With this weather, it's probably even worse. Well, take a seat. There's still another hour and a half before things are going to get started. Did you want a coffee or a tea or something? There's a kitchenette out back. Oh, you've brought snacks. Well, you're well prepared. <laughs> no, you're not interrupting any preparations. Don't worry. Honestly, it was either be at home alone or be here. So I chose here. That came out sounding way more depressing than I intended. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just came to work early, that's all. You'd share your snacks with me? Well, I do have a bag of peanut M&Ms here somewhere. Breakfast of champions. You don't have allergies, do you? Okay. So, what has brought you to this English Lit Lecture today? You're majoring in it? Oh, you want to lecture too? Nice, I can recommend. It's hard work to get there, but if you love it, then all the best to you. I'm guessing this is your final year of undergrad. Well, not many first years sign up to the lectures on more modern material. They're still stuck on the canon, the true classics, which is fine, but well, you know. Once you start reading wider and wider and analysing it all half to death, you realise that the latest romance novel is as valid as anything those long dead have written. <laughs> Sorry, I'm lecturing. <laughs> I'm just passionate. Most of my conversations end up in me blabbering on about books. Oh, that's kind of you. A lot of people don't seem to appreciate it. What are you reading at the moment? Nice. I think you and I are going to get along very well. Oh god, the weather out there is getting worse. It might just be you and me in person today. I think a lot of people are going to be listening in from home. Oh well. More M&Ms for us. You're not boring me. I think you're very interesting. And you have great hair. I've always wanted coloured hair, but I'm far too lazy. Nope, no tattoos either. I don't even have my ears pierced. See? I'm the dull one. No, well, I don't know about that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I remember you now. From your first year. No, I do. I've been trying to place you, and it's because your hair is a different colour. You wrote that ridiculous but amazing essay comparing Dickens to AO3 fanfiction. <laughs> it's one of the best things I've ever read. It, it had some pretty big structural flaws so I couldn't give you full marks but god I wanted to. See I knew you were interesting. Now you're a few more years in I'm very interested to see what that brain of yours has been cooking up. Well I'm so glad you're taking this class. I'll get to see more of you. And read your assignments, which I hope are still well outside the box. Have you decided on a thesis for your end of year yet? Oh my god, please tell me when you do decide. No, I love it. Oh. Well, ignore them. They're all the same. <laughs> They're just intimidated by new ideas. If you've got a brain like that, don't be like them. Be crazy. Don't let them smother that spark. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, miss, I'll be watching from home today. Yeah, I thought so. Oh, this stupid phone. I have like 50 missed notifications. Ah, yep. Just... You and me, it looks like. Oh well. I'll post the recording for everyone else later this afternoon. 
Well, that's what I get for coming in two hours early. But I'm glad I did. I got to meet you again. <clears throat> Ah, that familiar but still uncomfortable awkward silence when you put two bookish people alone in a room together. No, it really doesn't get better as you get older, I'm sorry to say. Awkwardness is forever. <laughs> well, you're glad you got to meet me again too? Mm, that's nice of you. Are you going to be alright taking the bus back in this weather? It's just... I, I know that road. It really is bad. Did... Did you want to lift home? I know it's not super appropriate to offer, but... There was that big accident there only last week and the sun was out then. Yeah? I'm happy to. Honestly, it would stop me worrying. Oh, remind me as well, there's a book that I've just thought of that you would love. I cannot think of the title for the life of me, but I can just, I can see it sitting on my shelves. I need to lend it to you. God, there's so many books I just want to pile up and throw at you. I want to feed that mind of yours. Yes, I guess if I'm giving you a lift anyways, then we could swing by my place and I could loan them to you. Otherwise, knowing me, I'll forget week after week and you'll never get any of them. They're all annotated, half to death, just a fair warning. Yeah, I like reading people's notes in books too. See what someone else thought about it. <clears throat> oh, Lord, now the lights are flickering. Good God. All right, I'm calling it. I'm not going to do the lecture here. I'll do it from home, away from the electrical hazard that is this campus's Wi-Fi. But I will wait for this storm to pass a little, if you're okay with staying as well. Yeah? And you and I can use the time to discuss your thesis ideas. That can be our pretense anyway, and then we can talk at length about fantasy romance novels. More awkward silence. Well, it's not awkward, I suppose. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm... I was having a pretty terrible morning, if I'm honest. And you've walked in and brightened up my whole day. And you're a student of mine, so... So what? You know what. <laughs> I'm only your professor for this semester. Semantics. But, true. You are so lovely, though. We're both adults, and you're a smart girl, and I'm supposed to be smart, but this is not a very smart thing to be doing. Yeah, I do like you, and I've thought about that ridiculous essay for years, and I would so love to see what else goes on in that head of yours. Oh no, <laughs> I'm not saying what's going on in my head, not now. Then I really will be in trouble. It's definitely not an awkward silence anymore, is it? I did say I live alone. <laughs> you? Four flatmates, geez. Yeah, you've got to love the economy, don't you? They all think you're weird. <laughs> well, I, I think you're weird too, but I like that. I like you. You're not going to turn around and tell me you're straight, are you? <laughs> yeah, sorry, just been burned by that one before. You too, huh? <laughs> you're bewitching, do you know that? 
You do. Okay. <laughs> You're aware of your own power. I like that. Well, you are... Oh, this is very stupid. If I weren't your lecturer, I would have already... <clears throat> uh, the storm is clearing up, so... Are you still happy to get in the car of someone who's basically a stranger? And did you still want to go to mine to borrow some books? All right. Well, we'd better go then. Well, welcome to my humble abode. I told you there were literal piles of books, but <laughs> I really did mean it. Oh, no, please browse away. Did you want anything to drink? Oh, I'm making myself a coffee. It won't be a bother. <laughs> oh, no. I've read a lot of them, but not all of them. I tend to hoard them for that mythical day when I'll have time to sit down and read something new. You seem extremely well read yourself. You're very impressive, you know. You are. The way you were talking while we drove here. You're a very intelligent young lady. Well, you should have more faith in yourself. Yes, that's right. I did have one I wanted to lend you. Where is it? Um, so you said you liked weird books, so here you are. <laughs> it's, um, The Constant Rabbit by Jasper Ford. It's about a world where in the 80s something happened in a science lab and all the rabbits in there got made anthropomorphic. So now it's a timeline where humans and rabbits must coexist and it's just ridiculous, but also amazing and really deceptively clever. And I think you'd really enjoy it. Oh, you do? Oh, I'd love to read that as well. It seems we're kindred spirits when it comes to bizarre books. <laughs> oh, yes, you're welcome to sit with me. Like I said, make yourself at home. Oh, the cabinet? Ah, oh, I, I collect wristwatches. I just like them. Some just because they're pretty. Some are antique. I like the men's watches too. They're so chunky. We really are very bad at falling into awkward silences, aren't we? No, you're right. It's not really awkward, is it? We... <laughs> we shouldn't mention this to anyone else. That you're here, I mean. I'm glad you're here. I'm very glad, so... Please don't think I'm not, but it's just the whole... Ethics side of it. Yes, you're an adult, but you're also my student. There's a power exchange there. Though if I'm perfectly honest, I do not feel like I have the upper hand in this situation. <laughs> hmm. Yes, you do know. The way you're looking at me right now, for example. And you had your hand on my thigh the whole drive here. No, I didn't push it off. Well, because I liked it there, I suppose.
me, yes, you could put your hand back on my thigh. <laughs> that is quite a lot higher than you were touching in the car. So we're agreeing that this is what's happening, right? Because from here on out, we can't pretend that you came here for just a friendly discussion between a professor and their student. Okay. <laughs> well, that's very honest of you saying you didn't come here for the book recommendations. What did you come here for? No, I want to hear you say it. I don't want the ambiguity. What do you want to happen this afternoon? Well, you certainly do know what you want, don't you? For someone who's so reserved in class, this is quite a different side to you. Well, I didn't picture you quite so... <laughs> yes, quite so dominating is the right word, I suppose. Not that I'm disappointed. Quite the opposite, in fact. Hmm. <laughs> Well, that's true about me as well, I guess you're right, just in reverse. Put me on a stage in front of a hundred people, I could talk for hours with perfect ease, but here I am in front of you. And I'm a little bit lost for words. Well, maybe I don't want to be in control. For a little while, at least. Hmm. And you're just going for it, huh? Unbuttoning my shirt. Don't I get to take off your shirt then? No, I guess I'm not in charge, am I? What do you want me to do? Did you want to move to the bedroom? No. <laughs> No, I want to. Yeah, I am risking a lot for you, but... Well, I think it's worth the risk. You're like a magnet I can't pull away. I do seem nervous, huh? I, <laughs> I guess I am, but... I want you. If you want me. I'm just not used to someone else taking charge, I suppose. No, no, I want you to. I do. Please. Just tell me what to do. Thank you. The references will be online. Remember to check them, please. You staying behind to ask a question, are you? How studious of you. Well, I'll give us some privacy then. Yeah. 
you've changed your hair colour again. No, I like it. It suits you. I don't know how you have the patience for it, though. I can barely be bothered to brush mine. Some days I should just shave it off. But what did you really stay back to talk about? Nothing in particular. You were unusually quiet today. I would have liked to hear your thoughts on some of the chapter discussions. Well, you could tell me now. It's just the two of us. And I know you've read that text back to front three times over. You do have a question after all. What is it? <laughs> no, I, I don't regret the other day. Not at all. I've maybe been a little distant because I was worried that you were the one who might have second thoughts. It would only make sense for you to have second thoughts. Well, shame on us. Here we are both assuming the worst. In fact, it was quite distracting going back to teaching you today, acting as if nothing had happened. All I wanted to do was stare at you. Because you're beautiful. I told you. I like the new colour. Your hair's not what I've been thinking about for days anyway. Your hands... No, I like your hands very much. They're lovely things. Well, you do have nimble fingers. <laughs> well, you seem to know what you were doing. You know what you're doing right now. You don't exactly have to be this close to have a conversation with someone, do you? Oh, you do? Why's that? Hmm. I didn't think I spoke that quietly. Everyone else seemed to hear me just fine for the last hour and a half. Oh, you, you had trouble, did you? Huh. <laughs> Must be something to do with the acoustics in here. You'll have to sit in the different desk next time then. Something much closer to the front. You should be able to hear me much better then. At the very least, I'll be able to see you better. Mm, true. <sighs> much more distracting, though. Do you have other classes to get to? No, nothing for me either. This afternoon, you were my last lot. In fact, I had the room booked out for the rest of the evening to work in. It's nice to have a bit of a break from my office every now and then. You're very dangerous, you know. Like a whirlpool. Or a riptide. You keep drawing me in. How am I dangerous? You can't tell what I'm thinking half the time. <laughs> That's true, I suppose. I get told that a lot. I tend to be a little too poised for my own good sometimes. But I've told you what I'm thinking. I've told you exactly what I'm thinking. And right now? I'm thinking about how glad I am that I locked that door after everyone else left. Oh no, I'm still cautious. Hence the locked door. I don't want anyone walking in on our conversation, but I'm also not willing to give you up. 
I like you too much. I enjoy your hands too much. Is this not just a conversation then? Then what is it? I always thought I wasn't much of a thrill seeker. I was always better suited to having my nose in a book than going on adventures. But here I am, grinding my heel on every ethical standard I've ever signed my name to. I have surprised myself. Have I surprised you? <laughs> no. Did you really think I was looking for something illicit? <laughs> well, maybe that's a little more accurate. Maybe I was bored. I was certainly lonely. We really should get better at this whole communication thing. Especially if we're going to keep doing this. Do you want to keep doing this? So that's a yes, then. <laughs> you know, I always hated how these rooms didn't have windows, but I'm very glad of it now. Did you plan this? Hmm? This little encounter after class? Well, because if I undo your shirt a little, I can see some lovely black lace poking through. You're too clever for your own good, you know? Far too clever. The intimidating sort of clever. Or should I undo your shirt some more then? Well, we'll have to be quiet. Yes, I can be quiet. Are you sure you can be quiet? Hmm, because you weren't very quiet. We can't have any of that in here. <laughs> oh my god, you're such a smart ass. No, this does not give you extra credit. Well, I don't know, can you give me some sort of special insight into the text while you're undoing my shirt? I thought your mouth might be a bit busy for that. I don't want to stop, but like I said, we'll have to be quiet. This building is old and these walls are thin. And what have you been planning? Go on then. Show me. I've never been to a gallery with someone else before. Yes, really. I'd always seen it as a very solitary sort of activity. 
If I went alone, I could stare at whatever I wanted for as long as I wanted. Well, I guess now, mostly, I'm staring at you. Not whatever is hanging on the walls. And you're very cynical. But correct. <laughs> what do they call it? Plausible deniability, I suppose. If anyone were to see us out together, we're just a professor and a student taking pleasure in art. That's a normal thing to do, right? Why do you think I have my hands so deep in my pockets? The temptation is almost too much to bear. The temptation to do all sorts of things. To tuck your hair behind your ear. To run a fingertip over your lips. Maybe later. For now, there are pretty paintings to look at. Well, that's true. <laughs> They're not all pretty. Not these ones. And why are you screwing up your nose? Come on, little Miss Opinionated, let's hear it. It's interesting that your stumbling blocks in literature are the same as art. This bad painting, as you so eloquently put it, is hanging in a museum because it's about its context. Yes, it is a bunch of blue squares, but read the plaque. And it was made in 1925. <laughs> God, how is it you can read the Canterbury Tales in Old English cover to cover, but you have no patience for art? I will explain because I have a point to prove. Well, think of it as more of that plausible deniability. If anyone asks, this is what we were talking about. <laughs> Art had always been structured around a certain set of rules. This is a portrait. This is a landscape. This is what good art is. Well then, World War I happened. Devastation that the world had never seen before. Weapons that destroyed like never before. All of it on a global scale. All of it on film for the first time. PTSD started to be recognised by doctors. At least the first inklings of such a disorder. The world had been turned thoroughly upside down, so how do you paint that? A nice little landscape wasn't relevant anymore when there were trenches and bombs everywhere. Perfectly posed portraits didn't matter anymore when most people had a husband or a brother or a father that was never going to come home. And if you were the one that came home, by some miracle, how do you process what you'd just seen? How do you show such devastation? You go to the absurd side of things, you paint blue squares. You disregard the rules, you make everybody question what good art actually is, you start arguments and invent modernism and shake up the establishment. So, in context, a painting of blue squares is good because it's a massive middle finger to the establishment of the day. Do you like it better now, my little anarchist? Yeah, I thought you might. And what about our context? No, I don't think so. 
quite the opposite. I think if we didn't have to keep this so private that I would love you even more. I'd be free to lose myself so maybe it's a good thing I can't let go completely. Because right now as things stand if I let myself fall any deeper I don't think I could bear it. <laughs> If that pressure valve were to be released, I think I'd explode. I'd look like that Jackson Pollock painting. An absolute mess. I told you I'm too collected for my own good sometimes. On the outside, at least. Well, that's very true, I suppose. You've seen me unraveled many times. But whose fault is that? Hmm, no. Definitely not yours. Your wide-eyed innocence is almost believable. Well, you're a better writer than you're an actress, let's put it that way. And you? This isn't one-sided, after all, if our context changes. And we can be more open. What will that change for you? Because I worry it's the secrecy of it all that you're drawn to. The thrill of it. It's not like I'm all that thrilling and not on my own. Oh, no. Thank you. People usually say that they want an intelligent woman on their arm, but then the reality seems to hit them quite hard and it's no longer a novelty. And I don't know why. Maybe they're intimidated, I'm not sure. No, actually, I can't really picture you intimidated by anything. <laughs> because you've got a swagger and you know it. You certainly do know it. I told you, you're not that good an actress. I wouldn't want you to hide your swagger anyways. Well, perhaps a little of your swagger will rub off on me. This has all turned rather bleak, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I suppose being surrounded by depressing paintings of blue squares and abstract nameless things will do that to you. We won't linger then. Oh, this is better. I can hear myself think. No one else likes it in here apparently though. <laughs> and yes, there is real art in this room. Oh, this is me getting swagger, is it? Of course I'm nervous. You know why. Yes, and that was behind a locked door. This is very much in the open. <laughs> you are like playing with matches. As in, I'm going to get myself burned. Oh, worth it. A hundred percent worth it. What are your plans for this evening? Why the smile? Oh, we have plans, do we? I wasn't aware. Yes, I guess I am aware now. So, what plans? Oh, you're so smug with yourself. Come on. What plans? I would very much like to go to dinner with you, but... Of course, you've already booked it. 
Yes, I do want to go. No, that's... that's right. You're completely right. We're just colleagues. A professor and her student having an engaging day out and dinner afterwards. We're human, we need to eat. We can be friends. Absolutely nothing wrong with friends being seen together, just friends. Nothing more. Or maybe you can show me how good our friendship is after dinner. Because by the time that's over, I don't think I'm going to be able to contain myself. Hey. No, come in. I just wasn't expecting you. I haven't heard much at all from you this week. Anytime. You're welcome anytime. I was worried about you. You haven't been in class at all this week. Yes, you said it was just a little cold, but let's be honest, I think it was a little more serious than that. No, you don't look like a corpse. You look lovely. And I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh, don't worry about one assignment. You'll get extra time to finish it. Oh, it's not favouritism, don't worry. Ten other people have come down with the same thing and more are dropping like flies. I'm just going to extend the deadline for everyone. Save myself the headache of keeping track of whose is due when. It's entirely selfish, I promise. Are you hungry? I was about to make dinner. Are you alright? No, I wasn't talking about your cold. You can talk to me. You know that, right? Is there a reason you stopped by tonight, or...? Well, I'm glad you wanted to see me. I've missed you. But you don't have to, you know. Keep seeing me. If you don't want to. No, I I don't want to stop, but I'm... I'm so aware that I have a power over you. That isn't fair. And no matter what we say, no matter what I tell myself... That dynamic is there. And I want you so much. I do. But I don't want to make you feel obligated. No, I don't think you're stupid. Quite the opposite. You're so intelligent, it's terrifying. And brilliant. The smartest of us still have blind spots and I just, I worry. Now I'm not trying to push you away, I'm terrified of pushing you away. <laughs> I'm doing a bad job of it then. Of pushing you away, well good. It was a half-hearted effort overall, huh? Dinner, then? There's nothing fancy, just spaghetti. I have wine, though. So that makes it fancy, I suppose. Did you want to talk about it? Whatever you need to talk about. Or not. We could just eat and drink. Here, come here. I'm always ready to hug, just say the word, hmm? Ah, oh, you see, I knew something was up. 
You don't really talk about your parents all that much. Well, it's none of my business trying to get information out of you. I figured if you had wanted to talk about them, you would. Oh, yeah, that's a familiar story. You're a failure for doing English literature. <laughs> and what does a successful daughter look like? I mean this with all the love in my heart, but you would be a terrible, terrible doctor. <laughs> there would be lawsuits within the first week of you stepping foot in a hospital. <laughs> I'm glad you chose English. I'm glad you're doing what makes you happy. Even if it's hard. Well, like I said before, you're brilliant. And I think I'm more qualified to judge than them, don't you? I have the degree. <laughs> hmm. See? Better already. It's almost like talking about things is good. <laughs> of course you can ask a question. Ah, oh, but see, that's a very silly question. Well, because in what universe would I say, no, sorry, you can't stay the night? Well, it's not this universe, so stay. Stay as long as you like. Hmm. <laughs> I can't help myself, can I? I mean, I'm only a woman. You can't expect me to have superpowers. Hmm. But dinner won't make itself. No. No, not right now. Because you might not look like a corpse, but you look like you need dinner. Someone around here needs to take care of you, and it might as well be me. Because you deserve it. You deserve more. You deserve to be worshipped, to have everyone fall to their knees as you walk by. You deserve the best of everything. To be remembered. To have people in thousands of years' time quoting you like they do Sappho and the Oracle. You, my dear, deserve eternity. But like I said, I'm but one woman, so at the very least, let me make you dinner. After dinner, though. Or maybe then I can give you an example of how you should be worshipped. You do deserve it. You deserve every bit of it. Or because they're all just sheep. Baby, most of the world doesn't have an original thought in their heads. So they see someone like you, someone visionary. And they're scared of it. Don't listen to anyone else. Hmm. Hmm. I know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, nice try. No worshipping until after you eat. I'm putting my foot down on that one. Trust me, will you? I'll take care of you. I love the rain. But you're not so much hyperactive as you are a chronic workaholic 
I, believe it or not, don't mind being stuck inside. <laughs> that wasn't a sigh about the rain. That was a sigh of relief that the academic year is over. No, I might not have to write any papers, but I do have to mark them, darling. I have to write classes, too. I know it's incredibly hard. You should feel so sorry for me. <laughs> Aren't you relieved? Yes, but like I said, you're a workaholic. Certified. It's actually a bit concerning. It's called a vacation. <gasps> I mean, I can assign you essays for fun if you really want, but I will also be deeply, deeply concerned about you. I don't know why you worry so much that you're not cut out for academia when this is your reaction to being forced to take a break. You're born for it. Yes, I mean that. I'm so excited to see what future you will be up to. How you're going to set that clever little brain to work. If you still want me around for that long. No, I've not gotten tired of you. Not one bit. I'd be more devastated than I care to think about, frankly. I'm not naturally inclined towards optimism, not when it comes to myself. Oh, stop it. That's your argument. <laughs> so I gather for now you're happy to keep sneaking around with me in this ridiculous fashion. <laughs> no, it does. It does make me happy. Very happy. <sighs> Come on vacation with me. Well, usually this time of year I go to the cabin I have on the coast. It's about a 10 hour drive away, so quite the trek but worth it just to get away from everything and well my uncle left it to me and good god wasn't that a drama when all the other cousins found out oh they were irate despite the fact that they'd never been there and hadn't talked to uncle greg in about 15 years oh the whole thing was ridiculous anyway it's mine, and it's full of books, of course, and has a fireplace, and is a short walk to the beach, through the trees. The only thing different this year is that I have you. Hmm? So what do you think? Go into state when no one knows us, huh? No sneaking around, just you and me. Two weeks by the ocean. I mean, it's the ocean in winter, but still. It's a Wuthering Heights sort of romantic rather than the bright summer sort of romantic. <laughs> no, that's fair. Wuthering Heights shouldn't be used as any sort of romantic comparison. But you get my point. Hmm? Was that a yes? Well, because you haven't said the bloody word yet. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of going on vacation, my dear. The whole point is to do nothing at all. So there's no plan, no itinerary. I can give you a reading list, would that make you feel better? Okay, what should you read on your, or on our holiday, huh? 
What should you read when you're tucked into bed or beside me on the couch? Oh, we're starting to see the appeal of a vacation, are we? Huh. Funny that. No, no, you wanted a reading list, little Miss Workaholic, so a reading list you shall have. You really do need to read Dune. I promise you it's worth it. No, you're not rereading Frankenstein. I put my foot down there. You know it by heart, and it's one of the most depressing books I've ever read. I don't know how that's your comfort book. I really don't. All right, then. A uh, picture of Dorian Gray. If we're going with the whole bleak theme. <laughs> that can be on your list. Uh, what do I want to read? You know, I don't think I've ever read an Agatha Christie book. No, I mean, there are a lot of books in the world. <laughs> oh, I should start with that one. Okay. All right. That's on my reading list then. Yes, I'm having a reading list too. Because I'm competitive. Speaking of which, read Kindred by Octavia Butler. Because you'll thank me for it, that's why. Go on, give me one. What should I read? <laughs> uh, okay, fine, I'll read A Court of Thorns and Roses. Oh, Akatar, sorry. <laughs> I never said I didn't think it would be good. I said I didn't think I would like it. Well, I'm prepared to be proven wrong. Well, if I'm reading that, then you have to read The Master and Margarita. Oh, I know you don't like Russian lit. I don't care. <laughs> I'm sure I can think of more books to add. Oh, good. Well, I expect a very comprehensive list because the only plans I have for our vacation are to stay inside, drink tea, and read. Well, I mean, I might have other plans. Hmm. But you're a smart girl. You don't really need me to spell those out, do you? Oh, you do? Oh, really? Well, like I said, we'll be tucked into bed and my fingers do tend to get a mind of their own sometimes. Oh, you've noticed? Well, when you're very busy with your reading list, I might be a little distracting when my hands sneak under the covers and into your pants. Well, they can stay there as long as you want. All day, in fact. My fingers have excellent stamina. It's all that typing I've done over the years. <laughs> oh, don't worry, baby. You're not going to get bored on our holiday. I'll be sure to keep you thoroughly entertained. <laughs> <laughs> 